All right, my third Arc Knights video, tutorial, guide, whatever, is going to be on the basic uh, menu stuff. So, friends menu, your profile, obviously, the friends you have, any friend requests, and support units that you're going to give to your friends, that you can lend to your friends, but really, if they want, if you want help. Archives, I'm not going to go too deep into this. This just shows every character and their factions. Oh, let me zoom. Uh, I forgot to zoom out. Okay, there we go. So you can zoom out here. Show you like Ryan Lab. It shows all the characters from Ryan Lab, obviously enough. <laughs> so this is like both Bolivar, Sargon, Carlan, Glasgow, Victoria. Yeah, it does a lot of factions. We all know that. So fashion gallery. It's just a chronicle of all the outfits that have been that have been released over the past few over the entire history of the game. Nothing that for the network character the archive basically. You are in trust as you complete levels with the operator or in the door or in the base. Once you reach a certain number of certain amount of trust, like it tells you this is how much you have and this is how much you need, you get special furniture. Not really that useful. But it's a good completionist. It's good for completionists, and that is. So, intelligence. These are just your records for your stories and events. So, if you want to go back to look at them. Path to Glory is actually pretty cool. You collect badges as you play the game. For example, Veterans Medal. It tells you how you got it. You have Foolish Play Level 50. Oh, damn. Level, I'm not level 100. Damn, unfortunate. <laughs> so, it tells you, like, I've been playing for one year. I have been playing for two years. And yeah, stuff like that. You can organize them into annihilation medals, basic medals, you know, event medals, yeah, this type of stuff. So yeah, you can click edit to read to move them around. Like this right here. Like this one right here. But I'm not going to leave there, because like how mine looks. So. It tells you like all your medals for the events, at least for the events. No path. I know I already did that. Enemy. This is just information about the enemies. The obviously the scaling goes from D, C, B, A, S, S, S. I think and triple S, which is like lowest to highest. Is that this originium slug, which you count literally the the very first level. Very simple enemy. Has diesel cost to board, so it has a very poor stats. But something like the Heavy Lieutenant Defender has amazing HP, a very high attack set, very high defense, and very low resistance. So it tanks a lot of physical damage, but takes a lot of arts damage. Remember to look at this after uh, after you've attempted a stage to understand the enemy's weaknesses. So. Yeah. Now, mission. Dailies, um, you just do this by completing. You, just, you can just complete a few levels, uh, and do some of your base. That's basically it, and you can complete all your daily missions. Um, the main goodie you want is the random, the 100 random every day. So, weekly missions. Um, yeah, same thing as dailies, but over the course of a week, really. Just keep doing them, and then uh, you get 500 random, which is very useful. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And campaign missions are... Rewards are good, but they're not amazing. So I wouldn't recommend you actually, like, focusing on doing them. But I know for beginners, they have this early subset of, subset of missions over here. Like, there used to be four for beginners. That first one, try to do that one as quickly as you can, I'd say. Don't, like, rush up. Like, do as quickly. But just, like, try your best to do as quickly as you can. Because it gives you a character called Texas. And Texas is very good as a vanguard. Let me show you. This is Texas. This is her second skill and why she's so good. Her skill lets you gain DP. It deals arts damage, which is pretty useful, and stuns them. So it's a very useful skill, especially in the beginning of a in the beginning of a level. Now a depot. The depot is where you look at your materials. Like here is my Originite Prime. Here is my Rundle. <clears throat> Originium Shard, Money, Pure Gold. Uh, all the other things. So, you look at all of them, or you can filter them. Consumable. 
this stuff you consume you use them pretty straightforward stuff like this yeah basic item this is like this is just your currencies and your base materials that is it your craft materials is basically everything else your level up books your level up records skill books and uh, promotion and uh, promotion and skill leveling materials so these are all for skill leveling and promotion and you have your skills and you have your uh, promotion and your potential stuffs your 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 stuff for potential so now I'm gonna explain uh, I guess I'll explain it in one video squads you organize your teams into different team you organize your operation into, into different teams um yeah that's basically it like I use this one for the for ranged only levels it does exist it's just very you don't really use them this is my main team but obviously I switched around turning on level this is my uh, annihilation team and this is just my clear uh, clear stone levels with very few characters team so Additionally, you can do quick select, which is extremely useful because you can do something like this. You're like, oh, this level I need, I need like three vanguards. You can just click, click, click three vanguards, and boom, you got three vanguards. And like, if I want to form a good team, I can do siege, bagpipe, where's Myrtle? Uh, Myrtle, Ifrit, boom, bam, boom. This isn't meant to be taken, you know, I'm meant to like, just like, I'm just showing you as an example of like how quickly you can form a team based on, you know, what there is. So, I'm going to delete this because I don't use the squad. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just, that's how squads work. And the way you can bring a squad into battle is by clicking story, just going to any level, practice, and it just brings up the first squad that you have. Or the squad you just, that you chose previously. So click this squad and you can start the mission with this squad. Now, operator menu. Um, there's not really that much to explain other than yeah, there's a lot of operators in this game. You can filter them like this. You can do like level. You can filter specific roles. You can filter them by resistance, which is pretty cool. Like they're all the same because all because all. Uh, because most of the guys just don't have resistance, or they have some resistance. Everyone all the way over here doesn't have any resistance. Because half, the, over half the characters in this game don't have resistance, so don't expect much. Now I'm just gonna talk about the way the operator files work. I'm gonna start with Siege, because she's probably my favorite character, other than Scotty. This guy is also one of my favorite characters. So here, this is where you level it. You can click on the records, or you can hold to add multiples of four. Now note, this costs Longman dollars, which I don't have, because I'm broke. But yeah, Longman dollars are required to level up your characters. You can't hold it, which is really annoying. But yeah, this is where you level up your characters. This is your promotion. Let me show you a character who's not promotion too. <laughs> Let's take Blaze. So you can click promotion. It tells you what materials you need. The amount of longman dollars you need, the, the chips, the materials, and the longman dollars. Obviously, you need they need to be max level for their at their promotion. It gives you a silhouette of what they could be. This is just a big black blob. <laughs> I know what it looks like, but it just looks like a big black blob normally. I was tells you new effects that they get. So potential, potential. I talked about this before. Is when you get a duplicate of a character. You can click improve potential and you see that you need to either get a token of the character by getting duplicates, getting four of the royal of these tokens. You don't ever go out of your way to purchase them, because it's a terrible idea. So for example, I can look at like Texas here. Like I already have Texas at max potential, but like I care another five star that I have like Granny is at potential too. But yeah, you see it gives you different benefits. Um issue is most of these benefits are actually really bad. So my advice is don't pull for duplicates of six stars unless you really like that character. Depends on what character though, because some characters have absolutely amazing potentials. I think Bagpipe has a really good one. Yeah, DB cost first talent is amazing. Attack more second talent amazing. DB cost yeah, it's really good. But for the most part, don't bother with pulling for duplicates. Oh, 
Now, let's see what else. Skills. Here, you can choose, you know, what skills you want to use, right? But another important thing to know, you can upgrade skills. Make sure to upgrade your skills normally. What I mean by that is, upgrade them from 1 to 7. For example, I can take Vina. Tells me what I need, the amount of books I need, what promotion level and what level. So, I can click this, consume the materials, and upgrade it. Now note, once you get to level 7, you have to use a training room to get anything past that. So, cause, because the way skills work after level 7 is, you unlock a mastery. A mastery, as shown here, has, works in three layers. Level 7, 7M1, 7M2, and 7M3. For example, I have this skill right here. This is max potential, so this is the best numbers you can get on the skill ever. Best numbers you can possibly get. Like two, M2, like decent, but like this is the second highest. And make sure, make sure, if you know what skill you will use the most, choose that skill as your default one. Like I wouldn't, like I don't like the skill, so I would choose this one as my default skill. Now, this, this bottom right thing, the branch doesn't really matter, but it's like a, it's kind of like a subclass for what role that you have. For example, you have Siege, who's a vanguard, but she's a pioneer, and the special characteristic of a pioneer is that they block two enemies. Doesn't really matter, but if you look, compare it to Backpack, who's a charger, they obtain one DP after they defeat an enemy, and they refund the DP cost. Unlike, but unlike Siege, or other pioneers like, like Texas, she only blocks one, so. Now, modules, just ignore it. You're never gonna use it that much, let's be honest. Talents. Are actually kind of useful. Depends on the operator though, because armorers have amazing talents. But sieges right here, it's decent actually. It's not amazing by any standards, but it's decent. Because it increases all vanguard's attack and defense by 8%. And gives you more skill points, which helps you fuel this. Everyone's talents has different effects, so check them out. Like Exia has the Angel's Blessing, which increases your attack and max HP to Exia and a random ally. And also buffs your own attack speed. So but you have like Silver Ash, who increases attack by 10% and reduces all redeployment time by 10%. And also reveals invisible enemies. So like each character is very different. Scotty, Pistol Hunter is very good actually, and reduces redeployment time. So. And she's a Dreadnought. Like, because if you compare that to someone like Silver Ash, who's a Lord, he can attack range, he can launch range attacks. <clears throat> Which brings my next point the range. Right here on the bottom left, tells you what role they are. Vanguard, guard, why is it in Chinese? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, Hypergriff, you couldn't bother to, to write this in English? Vanguard, guard, defender, specialist, sniper, caster, medic, supporter. I'll tell you what uh, what form of uh, how they attack, melee or ranged, and their roles. So, so far, just DPS support. Like, compared to Scotty, she's a DPS survival. And she has way less range, because she only has the town in front of her. Unlike Silver Ash, who can attack in a what is basically a hammer shape with him at the top of the hammer. And this allows him, as it says, to launch range attacks. So, yeah, range attack categories. Now, trust. Trust. You lock over time by completing levels, obviously enough. But, some or most operators, get, or all operators get bonus stats upon reaching. I'm on getting more and more trust. For example, Telopsis, she gets 55 attack. AF Yala is not fully leveled, but she has but she gets 67 attack. <clears throat> so now stats. Here. This plus it explains it to you right here. Max HP, this number. Attack, how much attack you do relative to an enemy's defense. Defense, how much damage you take. Calculated by the attack minus your defense. Resistance is resistance to arts damage. It's calculated on a percentage. Redeploy is the redeploy time. So slow, almost, just, all you need to know is that almost every character in the game has slow redeploy time, except for, every, except for certain specialists. So that's all you need to know. Now, cost. When you play that, when you enter a level, you have a cost. This is their cost. Block is how many enemies they block. So how many enemies can stand like on them and be physically attacking them while they're you know, fighting. 
So for example, if you have two units walking forward, they would both get interrupted by Siege and she would be able to take, she would be able to fight both of them. But if there are three, the third one would slip by. Attack speed is average. Attack speed is, um, it's really vague because attack speed can also be, because it's just as fast, slightly fast, slightly slow, or slow, or average. Like, XG attacks fast, so rest is slightly slow, Teleopsis is slow, AF Yala is slightly slow, and you have Sorry is average, Nina is slightly slow, Backpipe is fast, it's weird. Then you look at something like Project Red, I think. Actually, that's just fast, never mind. But yeah, that's attack speed. And here are your operator files. Or I like to call these operator files. It's the information about your operator files, voice lines, and this is just lore, by the way. So, and you unlock more trust, you unlock more files. So, and here are for special stories and uh, special uh, simulations. For example, Afiala. She's a good example because if I look at her files, these are missing because they don't have enough trust with her. But you can look at her voice lines. Yeah, stuff like this. And you can look at a story, like little, like a mini story for her, basically. And you can unlock another story with these requirements. And this is a paradox simulation. This is not really useful until end game, but they give you an ability, and you're supposed to clear a map with using the characters that they give you. That's basically it. Here are your outfits. I've already explained outfits, but yeah, you can change outfits if you have them. Like, I have the uh, Teleopsis skin. So I can change it from an E2R to, to this skin. So, I prefer this one. So, about outfits. Whenever any character Kate's, is uh, raised to promotion 2, they get a new skin. So yeah, like bagpipe without her promotion 2 she, she looks like this and once you get a promotion 2 she looks like this and I'm saving for this skin because it looks really cool and I'm sad that I missed it so yeah, I think that's basically it yeah that's it for the menu at least <clears throat> now it's time to explain gotcha <laughs> here you have You have recruitment, recruitment permits, I think they're called. Yeah, recruitment permits. You can spend these. I don't have any, but what happens is you add tags that, can, that specify certain operators. If you remember correctly, right here. Or for example, ranged healing support, <clears throat> and you can try to recruit operators. Most of the time you're gonna get a three star, but my but what I say is just always set it to nine hours unless you're trying to get a really low rarity character. Then just go with like one hour. But yeah, most of the time go nine hours. Then you get expedited this with an expedited plan. And toss the bag out. It's a four star because it's not purple blue light. And it's gonna be gravel, because gravel is the only redeploy character who is a four star. Yep. You see, like, I got combination certificates. Okay, cool. Now, headhunting. Uh, it's your standard gacha. It's 600 or random. It's really expensive for a single pull. But yeah, 600 or random, 6,000 or random for a 10 pull. So, and every time there's a new banner, the first, the first 10 pulls on the banner will guarantee you a 5-star operator or higher. So... I think that's it for the gotcha. And that's the menu in general. 